Hello and welcome to the technique and supply review for central line pick and midline dressing change. Whenever you are doing a central line dressing change, um, midline or a pick, the procedure is the same. It's a sterile procedure and you want to make sure you practice putting on sterile gloves and remaining sterile at the appropriate times. You want to make sure your patient has a mask um, and that you wear a mask. And you want to make sure that alcohol pads or swabs are used to break up the way the um, old dressing that's been on is stuck to the skin. The adhesive can be released when you use the alcohol pads or swabs as you're pulling it off the skin. So let's get into a supply review. I have my clean gloves an extension set that has the microclave that we supply you, a dressing change kit. This goes on, helps the patient after everything is said and done, goes on and holds the line secure. Alcohol pads, some saline, you would also want heparin 100 unit per ml. And this little kit that we provide with every new patient has a couple of nice things in it, one of which is the little clamp here that if you have any problems with a patient that has a hole in their line um, or um, has broken the line, this clamp can be used and is inside your, your supplies. The measuring tape here is used to measure the outside, um, the external amount of catheter on the pick lines that are outside so that you can document how much of the line is outside because that has to um, be measured each time you do a dressing change if for some reason that has come out further than the original um, site was assessed then an x-ray has to be done to verify where the tip is so it's important to, to, to do that step and we provide this to make sure that you have it so if this patient had a dressing on, I would apply my, of course, wash my hands, talk to the patient about um, the skill that we're about to perform, and I would use my clean gloves in order to remove the old off of the pick line or the um, site here in, in the chest. When I am doing a line change and grabbing all my supplies, I inspect the supplies to make sure the expiration date is good and that there aren't any tears or wet spots or anything on the packaging. You want to make sure you do that um, to make sure that you're not going to be opening up something and you using it on the patient that has had any kind of exposure to germs at all. Um, so let's open up the packaging and get started. When I open up a package, I do the whole thing. Some people just open it up enough to let the flap open up. I take the whole thing off. Just one of those little preferences. I would put on a mask and have my patient put on a mask explaining to them why to prevent any kind of breathing on the site. I'm not going to wear the mask for the purpose of the video so that you can hear me clearly. My sterile gloves are here. I will pull them out. And this is my sterile field. I use this little container here for any waste. Whenever you're opening up your sterile field, it's important that the like one inch area around the edges is what you consider non-sterile. So as you pull it apart, you want to be real careful not to pop it or anything so there aren't any supplies that might launch out at you. And to only touch the edges. When you do that, you're able to um, consider the entire inner area as sterile. When I open up my extension set, I again use a technique that helps keep it from popping out. I grab a hold of the supply and pull off the top and place that in my sterile field. Now for my sterile gloves. 
I usually carry sterile gloves w with me in case the ones in the kits are a little large. But as home care nurses, we're all used to making do with what we have, but we certainly pride ourselves on trying to give you supplies that work. So when you're putting on your gloves, there's a cuff there that you can touch with your non-sterile hand to pull it on. And then on the second glove, you use that cuff to put your fingers underneath and slide your non-sterile hand in. And then you can use as long as you don't touch in the cuff area, you can use this to kind of straighten out the glove. The inside of this is still sterile, so I can move it to the side. And of course, I wouldn't want to grab my edges and pull this to me. I can grab this and pull it to me since the inside is sterile. Now, I'm not going to prime this yet. I'm going to wait until my dressing is on because I can't connect a non-sterile syringe to this while it's in my field. Corexidine is the prep that we provide and is the preferred for um, from, from the CDC. To activate this, you pop this. This allows the fluid to reach the end here. And the difference between this and alcohol and the iodine is you're able to scrub the area all around since it's going to clean and disinfect the area and you can get the catheter get all around there if you were doing a chest catheter then you would do the same thing and you can even use a gauze to lift up the catheter if need be and this is what I would put in my little trash bin there we provide you with skin prep that can be used around the area once the chlorexidine dries and it's important to remember that a gauze and tape dressing at this point on either one of these catheters if you put gauze underneath the dressing it is then considered a gauze and tape dressing and must be changed every 48 hours according to INS so unless you absolutely need it um, do not use the gauze Let's say you have a patient with a pick line that does have some drainage there and you're concerned about it and you want to wick it away. Um, the technique for that is to fold your gauze in half and when you apply it, you want to put it a little bit above the site to where it literally wicks it away. You don't want to put it on it where it literally just sits there. If you put it a little bit above it will actually draw it from the site. But we're not going to use any, any gauze. So our site has been cleaned. And I'm going to sh show you how to use the Sorbivu on the chest here. Since I don't have the extension to the arm on this little guy for the pick line. But the process is the same. The, the good thing about the Sorbivu dressing is you do not need any other securement device. It is a dressing change and a securement device all in one. Um, I've seen a lot of people in skills place this piece on first and then complain about how hard it is to get off. This piece goes on last. The um, middle window area of course allows you to see the site and allows the site to breathe. The outside area wicks away any moisture or anything because the patient, of course, is going to sweat or perspire. Um, and then this secured area here keeps it from pulling on the side itself. So when you're placing it, like so. It is very, very easy to apply. I would, of course, considered putting it at a different angle and not going over this area right here, just for the comfort of the patient. Then this piece 
is put on like this. Now, of course, with putting this on, my gloves are no longer sterile. They're just clean. And that's how you put on the Sorbivue. And the same technique is used on a pick line. And when you go to remove it, and we have a video available to you to, from the manufacturer that is just a great view of all of this. But you literally look for these little notches and you tear the notches like such and you want to roll the sort of you up okay so if you were doing a pick line you want to remove tear the little notch and roll it up toward the patient you never want to remove a pick line dressing this way for fear of dislodging the pick or pulling it out at all. So this literally just rolls up and that's how you remove it. Now let's talk about the extension change. So I have a dressing on this little guy right here right now. And I am going to use my saline. Since that's been sitting to air, I'm just gonna go ahead and for caution's sake, you can never go wrong cleaning the microclave well at the end. The microclave allows you to see fluid, see if there's anything in the chamber, which is extremely nice. When you connect these two, it's just a soft push and turn. You don't have to do it too tight. And to prime, you're going to let a drop or so pull out, a drop out. You don't have to remove this protective cap in order to prime the set. I've seen that a lot. Then you get another alcohol pad and you're going to remove the extension set, wipe the end with alcohol. and put on the new one. And an important thing to note here is you don't want to put this on so tight that the next nurse cannot get it off. Um, some people just really torque it and it's very very difficult to get off. And that's how you change. You of course would flush. Um, whenever you're flushing the catheters uh, to infuse something, you would use the sash method, of course, saline, administer your medication, saline and then heparin, um, on the open-end catheter types that we talked about in the class. And you would use heparin 100 unit per ml um, at the end after flushing with, with the saline. And you remove it like this. And this is when you can use something like this, you can roll it up, teach the patients to pull this on. Um, makes for a very nice non-restrictive way to keep the extension set in place. This extension set is this length so we can teach the patients self-care so they can grab a hold of the end and actually learn to do their own infusion as opposed to not being able to reach it. Only a nurse does a dressing change on a pick line or a midline or a line such as this. Um, sometimes when it's tunneled can be taught. Um, so just make sure that you know your policies and procedures on that. But a pick line is always a nurse. And that's the end of our review. Thank you for joining us.